This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Good morning, I'm Justin Warmith. Last week, the Federal Reserve once again raised interest rates as it works to tame lingering inflation and slow down the economy. The move putting rates at their highest level since September of 2007, making it harder and more expensive to borrow money. This morning, the stock doctor Lee Seiler is here to offer insight and perspective on what's expected to be a long and bumpy ride to get inflation down to the Fed's goal of 2%. Lee, great to see you. Thanks for joining hey, us. Thanks, Justin, for having me. Appreciate you coming back on. Um, you know, it's just a, a never-ending cycle of, of news when it comes to the markets and, and folks at home in their wallets, right? right? I, everything is sort of intertwined here. So let's start with the announcement this week from the Fed. As expected, 25 basis point increase. Your reaction to that? I, I, like you said, it was expected. Mm-hmm. But two weeks ago, the expectation was possibly 50 basis points. Mm. So the fact that we had a few bank failures over the last couple of weeks did a little bit of the Fed's job for them. And we can get into that in just a little bit. But you know, the 25 basis point hike puts the Fed funds rate at 475 to 5. Of course, the prime rate now is 8%. Mm. So this is pretty much expected. But the Fed used, and, and Jay Powell used, a little bit different language this time that leads us to believe that we are some semblance near the end of the rate hike cycle. For instance, what? What did he say? Well, he said that increases are going to be lessened. So in the terminology that, of course, there's a thesaurus you need to (laughs) dissect every word the Fed chairman says. But the bottom line is we probably have, you know, we have a May meeting, I think May 3rd. That's probably 25. And then it's it's 50-50 whether the Fed raises rates in June. Mm -hmm. But the Fed funds futures, which is basically futures contracts and traders, I call it a probability study. They believe there's three rate cuts by year's end. I don't necessarily agree with that. I'm in the camp that I think the Fed will have to probably cut rates at least once by year's end. Mm, Okay. The Fed wants inflation at 2%, right? Right. That, the probability of that occurring this year is what, nil? I think it's nil. I think it's a very lofty goal. Why is that? Well, you still have things that are, the Fed wants to control, which is, employment. Mm -hmm. We're still at 3.6% unemployment. And we still have wage inflation, which I don't think wage inflation is going away. You read headlines all day long that uh, most companies are raising their hourlies, raising salaries. So that's not going to happen. The big issue really is rents Mm -hmm. and housing. I think that the housing market, as far as sales are concerned, that's going to start being a little bit more under control. But there's still the rent situation. And that's a big part of their inflation factor. Mm -hmm. So rents, keep in mind, Justin, Right now, it's one year, literally almost to the day that the Fed started raising rates. It's Mm -hmm. only been one year. So you've had the equivalent of 19 rate hikes. They did it nine times, Mm -hmm. but equivalent of 19 of them in one year. It does take time to filter through the system. Right. It's not going to happen overnight because the data, but they look at that data. And so is it, are they over calculating? Because I think it says 70% or so of the housing costs are the main reason for the inflation being where it is right now. Exactly. And that's what we're going to see. I think we're going to see sometime in the next few months, once these rate hikes get cycled into the system, people renew their leases. They're not going to be as uh, quickly to raise the rates like they used to be. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that Jay Powell is a smart man. We get that. But, But from our vantage point looking in, it seems like he should know this, right? He does know this. He does know that it takes time for that to deliver. So why the continued hikes? In your opinion, why is he continuing? I think they're trying to fix a mistake. Mm. They kept using the term transitory for months in and months out, which they thought inflation was temporary. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. And it was not temporary. Then all of a sudden, the explosion of cash went into the system and people spending money on goods and services and inflation through the roof and people are paying uh, 80% more for eggs Mm -hmm. and now we have a problem and the Fed now is gonna, inflation's their number one goal. Once they deal with that, then they'll deal with the rest of it. But again, employment's a problem still. The Fed, unfortunately, wants more people unemployed. That's the way you're gonna slow down spending. By how much? I think they'd be really happy if unemployment was over 4%. Okay, that's about that's about a percent right now. Like what? A, roughly, a, you need a, to go up about 40, 50 basis points. But you know, full employment used to be 
5% unemployment. Sure. That was considered full employment, but we've been sub 4%, and mm. there's more jobs available than we have that could apply for them. Mm. He also did mention uh, banks are sound and resilient, and I do sure. want to talk about this because I know that so many people have concerns. They see the headlines, they see the fear, they see their portfolios also reflecting you know, what happened with Silicon Valley Bank and the banks that followed um, collapsing. Um, right. Let's talk about SVB, uh, Silicon Valley Bank situation first. This, um, let's start with this though. Was it the right move for Janet Yellen to step in and do something about this? Yeah, I think you need to show that we are behind our, our, our public's deposits. Yeah. And Silicon Valley Bank, I think, is an anomaly. And the, the few that went under Signature and First Republic, I think those were anomalies. Let's talk about SVB first. I mean, I look at this as that when you have 90% of your deposits, and there's that number varies. I hear 85, I hear 95. So let's just call it 90% of their deposits over the $250,000 FDIC threshold, we have a problem. And I equate that to you have a stock portfolio, we manage money for a living. So if you or I put my clients 90% of their portfolio in one stock, mm -hmm. and that stock doesn't work out, your portfolio is devastated. Mm. This is what we saw here, where Peter Thiel started it, started pulling his money at SVB, everybody followed, and we had a run on the banks, and they had their money invested in long-term treasuries. What has a 30-year treasury done in the last year because rates have gone up? Backed by the full faith of credit of the United States government, the 30-year treasury down 30% last year. Mm -hmm. So they had to sell securities at deep discounts. They took billions of dollars in losses. So an anomaly. I, that. But again, we did see the trickling down effect. And I don't know yeah. what, what played into those other banks going down. Is it a similar situation or what? what yeah, they, they're all similar situations. Yeah. And here's the SVB, I think one thing that's interesting is that they didn't even have a chief risk officer mm. since 2020. And from what we're seeing out there is that they really had no business right. owning and running a bank. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, again, I don't think this is a contagion. This mm -hmm. is not 2008. The Fed swiftly stepped in. I think they did the right thing. Uh, you know, I think that the banking system is safe. If you have concerns about the FDIC insurance and you have more than $250,000, remember what you can do. If you have a husband and wife, you can do, it, it's really per person, per type, per account. So you can do $750,000 in three different counts, husband's individual, wife's individual, and joint account, and mm -hmm. get that protection. Or you can buy three month treasury bills mm -hmm. and put the onus on the United States government and still make 4% on your money. Some good tips there. Do you think what's happening though with the banks will eventually do the job that the Fed is trying to do? Because that's, all, that's what this is all about. That's what these rate increases are all about is well, they're stopping already talking about getting money. Yeah, and right? they're, they're gonna tighten credit. Yeah, right. I mean, right. so as credit tightens, that's gonna be less people able to draw on their credit lines mm -hmm. and do certain things. Not to mention the prime rate at 8%, a lot of these credit lines are prime plus. Mm. So it used to be 3% when the Fed funds was at zero. So you know, 3% prime plus is not such a big deal. 8% plus is a huge deal. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see credit card rates now, and I'm seeing them out there, 18, 22, 26%. It's craziness. If that doesn't stop you from spending, I'm not sure what will. Coming up, the stock doctor will explain where he's putting his money in this choppy market and the impacts a potential recession could have on the economy. Stay with us. This is the weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Welcome back. The Federal Reserve extended its year-long fight against inflation by raising interest rates by a quarter of a percentage point last week. The decision comes in the aftermath of a number of bank failures and a chaotic few weeks on Wall Street. Now there are fears the country could go into a deeper recession. The stock doctor, Lee Seiler, is back with us to explain what that would mean and what the Fed is looking to achieve. Is it just inflation? That is the only thing that's driving this. It really, I believe yeah. it's just inflation. Okay. I mean, when you have inflation that was at 9%, yeah. and you're paying such, used cars were up 40%. Oh, it, I mean, it, that's ridiculous. Something had to happen, right? I mean, I heard a story yesterday where a, a, a client came in and said, yeah, I had a leased car, they offered me $10,000, yeah. just take it back. <laughs> that's just craziness. The same thing happened to me. It's craziness. It, it is, and it, it, it's not sustainable. That shouldn't happen. Yeah, it's not sustainable, and, it, and he said that Yes, it will be a bumpy 
yes. ride here. And I and the the word that you know you hear people experts talk about the recession, recession, recession. We're going to a recession. We've been in a recession. Does that matter at all when the word is used? I think it scares people. Yeah. But and and this is going to be and he said in past. Uh, testimonies, Mm -hmm. that it's going to be painful. Mm -hmm. You have to have pain to get out of these situations. And let's talk about the stock market and recession, Mm -hmm. because normally the stock market bottoms before the recession really takes place. Keep in mind what a recession, how it's called. An organization, the NEBR, several months from now will say, oh, by the way, back in the second quarter of 2023 or first quarter of 2022, we were in a recession. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the yield curve has been inverted since March of 22. That's a warning sign. Two negative quarters of GDP. But here's the good news. Uh, for, for folks that have their 401ks, because I know that last year was not a good year in the markets. However, first quarter so far this year, we are in positive territory. Mm-hmm. So one thing to keep in mind, that only in history, four times, four times in history of the stock market, has the market been down two years in a row. Mm-hmm. It's only four times. And those four times have been financial crises. Yeah. This is not a financial crisis. This is probably going to be a mild recession if we haven't already seen it. Mm-hmm. And I think that between that, the four years, between the third year of a presidential cycle after a midterm election, we're almost 100% as far as positive stock returns. Mm-hmm. So I think we're okay. And I believe by year's end, the market will be higher than it is now. It's going to take a little pain. Recession, if we haven't had it already, they'll probably call one that, hey, we're going to have one sometime middle the end of this year. The Fed will probably, when they hear that word, will start cutting rates, and then the fund begins, and the market probably will will start repricing some things. How much of what the Fed did this week was already priced into the stock market? You think that was just, it was, they expected, the market expected it, so? Yes, and then we saw a a deceleration in prices yesterday. Right. Then we saw the the Dow, which, again, the Dow is not the stock market, I want to be clear. The Dow dropped 500 points, but the S&P also dropped, and the S&P 500 is the stock market. Mm-hmm. That's the 500 largest companies. But yeah, I mean, you think, once you think that, hey, it's priced in, then the market tells you differently. Mm-hmm. But then today seems like things are a little bit more firm, and it's really about the banking system. I think it's creating opportunities out there, because some of these, look, Bank of America took in $15 billion in deposits over the last few weeks. Mm-hmm. So, so folks are not comfortable with some of the regionals or the smaller community banks. I'm not saying one thing or another, whether they're bad or good. I think if you feel comfortable with it, stay with it. But people are starting to flow into some of the big banks. Okay. Where, where are you putting your money right now when it, when it comes to opportunity and you're seeing those op, the, that buying spot right now? Where, where are you putting your money? What sector? Well, you have to look down the road. If you believe that interest rates will be lower down the road, you got to start looking at growth. Right now, it's been value. You want to look at where the sum of the parts are worth more than the whole. So mm-hmm. the companies that have the nice dividends, that's been working in the last year. But when rates start going down, when you see the 10-year treasury, it was over 4% beginning of the year. Now it's down around 3.5%. What's happened to growth stocks? Mm-hmm. We've talked about some of the semiconductors you and I talked about yeah, that, right. that you pick some up right. in. And um, they're, they're rocking when rates start going down. So I think you have to look forward and back to some of those growth areas. Technology usually works in that mm-hmm. area. Healthcare is going to work. And I think there's opportunity in the banking stocks that have been absolutely bludgeoned mm-hmm. in the last couple of weeks. Those growth stocks that just absolutely went crazy mm-hmm. during the pandemic, especially right. in 2020 right. with the influx of money out there, those have been absolutely beaten down, kicked. Some down 75, 80%. Yes. And so, I mean, you see the, the highs on those though, and you're like, that doesn't seem like that's even reachable at this the point. The highs were a figment of our imagination. Okay. They shouldn't have even been there. Yeah. But because remember what happened is that everybody's at home, so all those stay at home, the stay at home stocks were mm-hmm. working tremendously. Yeah. Then all of a sudden people went back to work. So, I mean, I have concerns over things like, because people are back to work, I think that the commercial real estate side, as far as office spaces, mm. I think that's going to be a problem. We're starting to see that now, especially since these regional banks, a lot of them, a lot of the commercial spaces get financing from the regional banks. Mm-hmm. So we're going to see what happens there if that's another shoe that may drop. You know, I, I'm cur- I know that this is not necessarily something that you are passionate about or really invest in, but we did see since SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, went down, you saw the collapse of some of the banks, we saw Bitcoin go up. 
Right. Is that, that's just a natural progression? What, do you, what does that tell you? I think it's investors not having confidence in the banking system. They think that there's a better currency out there. Mm. So we, you have seen Bitcoin rally and all the cryptocurrencies rally, but keep in mind, they're down 70, 80% as well. Yeah, they are. So we call that a dead cat bounce. They needed a reason for them to rally. You know what, I'm, I'm not a big believer in cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. I mean, my clients are different. We don't need to own them. But if you want to as an investor, if you think you can assume because they're extremely speculative, then albeit. Just, you gotta be able to stomach it. You gotta well. be able to stomach it and it's gotta be, a, you can be, assume a, a total loss. Mm -hmm. What will you be looking for as far as good news is concerned? Over the next, let's just say, the next quarter, right? What are you looking for? You want to it's all about optimism. You want to see progression in the CPI. Mm -hmm. You want to see that prices are going down. And they are going down. We are seeing deflation, but it's not going down as fast as the Fed. And, and keep in mind, we're looking, we really need to look at housing because the, the rental situation is a problem mm -hmm. still. So I think if we see those numbers start to kick in, the Fed at some point, they're going to pause. So there, there's the two Ps, the pause and the pivot. Mm -hmm. So the Fed is going to pause. We, we don't, look, their dot plot, the Fed dot plot shows rates at 5.1. So we're almost there. One rate hike gets us at that 5.1. Mm -hmm. So do they have one or two left? I don't see more than two. Mm. May possibly could be our last one. Mm. I do want to mention this uh, before we go because j Powell throughout the, the recent rate hikes and, and his comments, did mention Ukraine and Russia right. seemingly every time. I think that every time he mentioned the impact that that's having. But he did not mention it this past time. What does that tell you? I think that tells us that it's not in the forefront anymore. Okay. I mean, it was a, look, as bad as it is over there, mm -hmm. it was headline news for several months. And then people get news fatigue, as you know, mm -hmm. after hearing the same thing over and over again, we know how bad it is. The Fed now has to say, let's, let's worry about inflation right now because we can't control what's going on in, in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. We just can't control it. Hopefully there'll be a resolution at some point. We will see. And if that, that's icing on the cake. And my thanks to the stock doctor, Lee Seiler, for his time and advice this week. For more information on the rate hikes and the impacts they're having, just head to clickorlando.com. I'm Justin Mormuth. Hope you have a great Sunday.